Graham, here we are on a, a snowy midweek. How's the weather affected training? Uh, well, yesterday obviously a bit fresh, but it was more of a recovery day anyway, extended recovery. So we had a bit of a off the feet spinning class, which the lads thought it was going to be nice and easy, which it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it was it was just something different for the lads. Uh, got the legs going, got them moving. Uh, they enjoyed it, and we, it, with that, we had a bit of an indoor. Uh, head tennis competition. Uh, obviously, I won again. So <laughs> I did actually. Did <laughs> My team won. Oh, there you go. Uh, but it's no shock. <laughs> so but now we, uh, yeah, that was a, uh, yeah, just a bit, something a bit different. But like I said, a spinning class uh, provided by the university, which is fantastic, and just something different for the lads. How important is that now, especially at this sort of point in the season, to try and keep them engaged and, and you know do things that maybe just take them out of the comfort zone a little bit and freshen things up? Yeah, massive. Like I said, it's been it's been a I've said it before for the <coughs> a lot of players is two week break from last season going into this season. It's it's a long to be continuous. Just going at it and going at it and. They've achieved great things over the last year, so uh, especially last season and coming into this season. And so, yeah, at this time of year, it's the the fit lads. You're not going to get many fit, and now it's just about how uh, managing the bodies, the minds. The minds probably the difficult part, and little days like that. Hopefully, it just takes the mind off things and freshens up, gives a little bit more distraction. But without realising that they're working quite hard. <laughs> and at this point in the season, have you have you had to sort of reaffirm any things with with um, performances or mentality you know notes any players may be taking their foot off the pedal and you've had to sort of collar them and say yeah. oh, it's not done yet yeah no like, you have chats I've had chats with quite a few players just get, trying to get near that mindset about finish the season off well yeah, a lot of them are on board they're, they're all well majority they should be on board especially when you have conversations with myself and things and we're talking about what we want to achieve going forward and not this this season, but next season. Take the momentum for in the next season. <clears throat> but now these look, we want to be. Like I said it before. I want to play with a bit of freedom and a bit of enjoyment. And but games. Once a game starts, it's that pressure comes. The lads are on the pitch and they're trying to achieve things. And the motivating and the drive is is key. And we have to keep doing that in training. So the know that we keep doing that in training, then we'll keep doing that in the pitch. Looking back to the the Mansfield game, now you've had a bit of time to sit with it and digest it. Do you see it, albeit despite Joe White's miss at the end? Do you see it as point gained, points dropped? How do you assess it? Uh, probably enjoyed the challenge. It was it was a. Uh, we knew what Mansfield were going to be there. Look, uh, I'd say. It was, openly say they're probably one of the better teams or one of the best at this moment in time probably the best team in the league the way they, they play the game I wait, they get the ball fall quick but then they, they pass and move and runners and with high quality players in the, in the pitch and then they bring some light resorts on with 15 minutes ago and you've got to handle that threat as well so they're an exciting team so Start the game, you you going out and you you don't expect to be two 0 down as quick, and then you start feeling. But now great character from the lads and to come back and get the two two, and then it was just about working hard. And I think at that at that moment in time they have to work hard for each other, and that mindset's like it doesn't matter where you are in the league, what you're doing, you're not to try and get something out of that game, and they did. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed the challenge. It was, it was a, against one of the top teams. It was a great challenge. And are you sitting there on the sideline thinking it would be nice not to have to do the the great comeback fight? As, as dramatic and as entertaining as it is for those of us who are watching on, probably not you on the sidelines. No, like, <laughs> I, like I said, I didn't enjoy the way we conceded the goals. I don't enjoy conceding any goals and we're probably conceding too many goals of late, especially first goals. Uh, didn't enjoy that, but enjoyed coming out. And then you start going back to the game at their place and you say hold on a minute we might just mm. we might just turn this one round and Joe White like I said he's fantastic running he was probably he was more steady on his feet than, uh, than I thought it was just a bad miss <laughs> 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 I said that to him but nah I loved it he said, yeah, I think, and he's, he openly said he probably give himself too many options running over. You overthink things, and you always seem to pick the wrong choice. So sometimes just simplifying it would have been the easiest one. But fantastic run. Not many of the players would have got us in that position, apart from Joe. I was reading uh, Stephen Hoban's program notes before kick off, and he, he mentioned in it about how the the average attendance at home games now this season stands at around five and a half. 
thousand, yeah, which is yeah. incredible. And your record since you've come in at home in the league, just one defeat, I think it is, in the league um, at home. How big is that home crowd and that home support to this team? It's 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 massive. It is massive. We keep saying it all the time, but the the attendance is it's unbelievable to get to that, and it shows what the the club have been, the fans have been, the town have been waiting for the club, the bit of success, and mm. the people are coming in and enjoying. And that's what I keep saying. We we've got to make sure we we keep people enjoying the games and and having something you you felt you seen we go two 0 down and it's. Everyone's a bit shell socked, and then we get that first goal, and then the, f the fans go, and then we get the next goal, and the fans go again, and that it, the energy from both from the players and from the fans' connection is massive for us. It does; it drives us forward, drives the team forward. Every play, you can feel it, and it's like I said, it's it's a, absolutely unbelievable. I, I spoke to again. I was speaking to Rotherham, uh, my friend at Rotherham today. We had a little chat. He was just ringing about Jake Hull's progress uh, without playing any games. How was he doing? Spoke about the weekend, and then he said, "Have I spoke to? Have I listened to any of their players' press going into the final?" I was like, "No." He said, "Every single one of the players said how hard of a challenge Hartlepool causes, and the atmosphere right. in that atmosphere was one of the best occasions all season they've had." Like, mm -hmm. so a majority, of the, by all accounts, I haven't heard the press, but everyone praised like the atmosphere and everything what it brings, and that's what we want. It's mm -hmm. we and we want nights like that. We want to be successful, but we want to be winning games. One defeat, you said at home. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, but no, nah, it's it's uh, nah, the atmosphere has been fantastic, and like I said, we've got seven games to go. Uh, Remind me how many home games left. We've got uh, three after three home weekend, games. Yeah. So let's just enjoy the next mm. few home games together. Looking ahead to those last seven games, uh, just in in total, um, how much do you, or how much will you use those games to tinker, try things, whether that be players who maybe haven't had a lot of minutes, or even looking at tactics and things you might want to implement for next season. How much yeah. do you look at those kind of things? Starting to at the moment, I'm, yeah, you're looking at a few players who you want to. There's players of decisions to be made and players, and there's also players who have. Like I said, Jake Hull, uh, at some point I want to get him on the field because he's done everything right in training. He's just he's been stopped by the progress of uh, the centre halves who played. Yeah. They've done well. Uh, results have shown. So it's been difficult. So even getting him involved because you've got then Gary who's been on the been doing well when he's played games, but the formation switches took him out of the team. So it's been like people like Jay. Well, I'm desperate to get him on the pitch. Just I want to I want a good look at him because I keep saying lads. He, as much as it is, he might go on that pitch and be like, "Oh, hold on a minute," because you know, he shows it in training. So it'd be exciting to get him on the pitch and have a look. Especially, I said I spoke to Rob again today, and if we can get him on the pitch, it might be something we want to look at next season. And uh, this is the obligatory contracts and negotiations question now, which yeah. I'm sure we'll speak a lot of between now and the end of the season. But any any movement there um, in terms of the players mm -hmm. that are out of contract at the end of the season? I know there's quite a few yeah, of them. Yeah, so yeah. what's the latest in that situation? Yeah, look, it's <coughs> as you can imagine, it's a difficult the talks and chats and. But no, we've uh, we are close, very close, and possibly two, uh, and then. The other two, we have to try and once we've spoke to, we're trying to uh, push. Oh, is it three, four? Could be three. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's two. Yeah, there's three possibly. And like I said, we're, we're getting close. It's just looking, as you can imagine, it's conversations and the meetings and chats and getting to where both parties are going to be happy. Is it difficult to juggle that, you know, the negotiations and talks with players and the match day stuff and? All the other players that you have to jump. Yeah, look, that's yeah, yeah, that's one of the things. It's we talk about the mindsets, yeah. and you've got players coming out of contract. You've got players uh, who haven't been playing are coming out of contract, and they want to be fighting for their place. And if they're not playing, they get frustration. So there's chats. I'm having chats quite content, uh, quite regular with players, and just trying to pencil in what times I'm going to be speaking to the, them and the agents and then also the ongoing chats about what's going on so it's it's yeah we're, we're, it's part and parcel of their job you're managing you're speaking to them but the main priority for the lads is making sure their mind's right on the game and like you said in the talks we'll try not to do talks too close to games which unfortunately there's a lot of games <laughs> <laughs> but no nah, nah, like you said we are we haven't chats and we get more clear pitches where we want to be Salford uh, obviously on Saturday a, a team that are absolutely flying at yeah, the minute and, yeah. and got a few games in hand as well so they're 
potentially looking at pushing for a yeah. playoff spot. How do you uh, try and try and stop their momentum? Uh, look, uh, you watch you watch each team you're going to come up against. Uh, four three three, exciting. They've got some exciting players, and you try and pick out points where we can hurt them ourselves. But I keep saying it: we have to be we have to play at a certain intensity. We have to play at a certain work rate and work for each other and if we do that we're going to cause any team's problems and I've said that and we've seen that even you go against Mansfield we still managed to get the two goals and uh, by doing the right things forward runs getting bodies in the box so we'll same as it's look we'll go up against them we'll, we'll come with energy hopefully the fans will enjoy they'll be coming with their energy and we'll get at them and try and upset them I think they're unbeaten in 10 and they've won what six out of the the ten games, so they're on a they're on a high run. They're trying to push. So for us, let's try and stop it. And Luke Molyneux, how is how is he uh, this this week after that whack that he took on his? Uh, his yeah, he's got he's got a whack. It's a bit swollen. I'm saying he's milking it now, and I think he, I think he milked the applause around the outside. Now, thank, <laughs> thankfully, it's uh, it's not as bad as it first feared. It was uh, there was a hell of a whack and. And he said it is swollen and bruised and there's a cut cut there, so we'll let him have that. But hopefully he'll settle quickly and get him back in training at some point. Well, physios assessed it. I'm not sure yet. For, definitely not this weekend, but yeah. going forward, we'll see. Marcus Carver as well. I know he had illness or something. Yeah, Carver's back in training now. So, he, yeah, he just had a, like you said, I think he had similar type of symptoms or the same as what Ben Killip had. So, hot and cold sweats in bed for a few days and then... He's back to train yesterday, he done his spinning class with the lads yesterday, got a good sweat on. Uh, so he'll be back in contention tomorrow. And any other team news wise, any of the knocks, niggles, injuries that you've got to <coughs> about heading into Saturday? No, look, we, I think so, you can see like the Bryn's managing his knock, it's it's bro, uh, it's bone bruising so from the impact, so it's it's uncomfortable more than anything. So it's not one way you can just run it off, it's uh, his mind, it's just constantly there. So I'm going to have a chat with Brent today regarding that and see what the best solution is with it. Spawn, thank you, mate. Appreciate no it.